Hello Owners Chemistry and welcome to a refresher or review on naming. What I'm going to do is I'm going to work through this so you can listen or work along or whatever feels most helpful to you. So, um, hydrochloric acid. Things that I would take note of include the fact that we've got a hydro prefix here. That tells me that this is, well, this tells me it's an acid. This tell me it tells me it's binary, right? Um, so then I know it's going to be hydrogen and this root, which is chlorine. And I know that chlorine, based on the periodic table, has a charge of, right here, group 17, negative 1, right? So this is going to be Cl negative 1 which means that I need one of each, and my formula is going to be HCl. For chloric acid, so I would see, ah, acid, and then I would see no hydro, which means that this is an oxy acid, which then means I need to go find, it ends with ic, so it must come from chlorate. So I will say H+, plus, and I will scroll through my brain and figure out chlorate, and I need one of each. All right, next one, cobalt two perchlorate. So this one, we would say to ourselves, ah, what's the significance of this? Right, that tells me the charge of cobalt, which means that I automatically know that this is ionic. I know that it is type two. And perchlorate means that it contains a polyatomic ion, right? So um, let's think about our pieces. So cobalt clearly has a charge of plus two and perchlorate has a charge of, right, negative one. So I need one of these, two of those. So one cobalt and two perchlorates. All right, next up, selenium dibromide. So I would look at my, well, first I'd see the I'd ending, which tells me binary. I'd see, ooh, I see a numerical prefix, probably molecular. I would go look at a periodic table and find selenium. And here is selenium. Here is bromine. Those are both non-metals, which means that, ah, I am going to just write what it says because that means this one is molecular. So selenium dibromide. All right, next up, we've got sodium oxide. So I see the oxide, I'd ending, tells me probably binary. Um, sodium and oxygen, I would look at a periodic table and say, ah, sodium, oxygen, metal and non-metal means that this is, right, um, this is ionic. I would go look at my periodic table again and see, ah, sodium. Sodium is definitely a type one because it's in, right, it's in group one. So I know that it has a charge of plus one. And oxide, oxygen is in group 16, which means it has a charge of negative two. So I have negative two. So that means I need, right, I need two of these and one of these. So Na2O, sodium oxide. All right, next up we have chromium 3 phosphate. So this again is the big clue that this is a type 2 ionic phosphate, tells me that it contains a poly, right? So I just have to balance charge. I have plus 3. Phosphate is minus three. I need one of each. So it's chromium phosphate. All right, nitrous acid. I know it's an acid. No prefix. Us ending, so it must come from nitrite. So now I'll just work through my charges. This is H plus. This is NO2 minus. I just need one of each. Okay, dinitrogen tetroxide. I've got a lot of clues here. Binary, numerical prefixes tell me that it's probably molecular. I'd go look at a periodic table and see, ah, nitrogen, oxygen, 
both nonmetals. So I'm going to write what it says, N2O4. All right, strontium peroxide. So here is where you might see the I and be like, ooh, binary. But then you'd be like, what is a perox, peroxygen? That's not an element. And then you'd be like, ah, that's because that's a polyatomic ion. So um, we go find on our periodic table, we go find strontium. Strontium is right here in group two. And so that means it has a charge of plus two. It's definitely a metal. Um, putting all those pieces together, we have plus two for strontium. So this is a type one. And this is a poly, right? So we have plus two peroxide, minus two. So I need one of each, right? So SR, O2. O2 because peroxide is O2 with a charge of two minus, right? All right, lithium bicarbonate. So um, we would just see this and be like, ah, that's a polyatomic ion, probably ionic. We go look at a periodic table to just double check. Ah, lithium, indeed, it is a metal and it's in group one. So we know we have a plus one charge, oh. plus one is equal to, this is ugh, minus one, I need one of each. So LiHCO3. All right, other direction. So if I see KHSO4, so first of all, I see one, two, three, four elements, which means it must contain a polyatomic ion, right? Um, I see potassium which from my periodic table, I know that potassium is a metal, right? And specifically a type one metal, right? So this is ionic, type one, um, and it must contain a poly because it's got so many elements. So poly, right? So I would just think, well, what are these pieces, right? I know my first one is potassium, and then the HSO4 is by sol fate, right? or hydrogen sulfate, if you prefer. All right, next one starts with H, must be an acid, has several elements, must be an oxy acid. So we will name it accordingly. This ion is called acetate, so I will replace that with ic, right? Acetic acid. Next up, SiF4, I would need to consult a periodic table, and my periodic tells me that silicon and fluorine are both nonmetals. So I would go back and I would just write down what my prefixes say. I have silicon, four is tetrafluoride, and the i ending because it's binary. All right, next one. I see, oh, I've got three elements, right? This must be a polyatomic ion, so it's ionic. I need to go find barium. Barium is, ah, in group two, which means that this is a type one and uh, contains a polyatomic ion. So I'm just gonna barium, that's the name of my metal, and full name of my polyatomic ion, which is permanganate. Barium permanganate. All right, next one, like, ah, there are so many elements. And I remember, ah, this is that special, the only polyatomic cation that we have, right? And this is our anion. And remember, we treat ammonium like a type one um, in that there's no need for a charge, right? So we're just going to name our respective pieces, right? This is ammonium and CN is cyanide. All right, next up. Ah, we've got, again, lots of elements, right? We would go to our periodic table and find PB. Where is PB? Ah, PB. It is a type 2 metal. So if it's a type 2 metal, that means we are going to have to figure out its charge. So we've got ionic, type 2, poly. So we've got to work backwards to figure out its charge. I don't know the charge but I do know I have one of them. The charge of chromate is negative two, and I have one of those, which means that it must be lead two. So lead two chromate. 
All right, next up, iron. And we'd go find iron and be like, oh, look, that one's also a type two. Um, so we would work, so again, ionic, type two, has a poly, and I know that because there's so many elements in here, right? More than two elements, anyway, okay? Um, so I would put an X, I have one of them, chlorate has a charge of minus one, and there are three of them, which means X must be three, which means this would be iron, three, chlorate. Next up, we've got, oh, so many elements again, probably contains a polyatomic ion, probably ionic. We'd go find magnesium. Magnesium is in group two. Since magnesium is in group two, that means this is a type one compound. So this is ionic type one, poly. And so this would be magnesium. And we would name that second part, which is dichromate. Next up, ASF3. Well, we'd go look at our periodic table and find arsenic and be like, ooh, arsenic is a non-metal. So we'll just name it as a molecular compound, right? So arsenic. Three is trifluoride. All right, last one. So many elements must contain a poly. And we just need to figure out type one or type two. We'd go find mercury. Ah, indeed, that is a type two. And so we'd work backwards again. X, I have one of them. Sulfate, nope, sulfite. Has a charge of negative two. And there's one of them. So X must be two. So this is mercury. Two, sulfite. All right, make sure you practice, practice, practice. Again, you must memorize the parts that need to be memorized. And the thing um, that maybe you don't realize right now is the better memorized those are, the less hard your brain has to work through the naming rules. So while the naming rules might feel really hard right now, when you take one thing off your plate by having those polyatomic ions well memorized, then the naming part feels easier promise. All right. Uh, be good. Have a good day. Thanks for listening. See you soon. Bye.